Virginia. It's where the North meets the South. It's home to the wealthiest part of the United States, leafy suburbs of the nation's capital where business is booming, as well as struggling coal mining towns in the hills and mountains of Appalachia. Tobacco is still grown in much of the state, on farmland where enslaved people once toiled and Civil War soldiers fought. You can still visit the site of the first permanent English colony in the mainland of the Americas, and find families who have lived in the state for hundreds of years, some descendants of the wealthy owners of slave plantations who dominated early American society and made up seven of the first twelve U.S. presidents. Home to beautiful mountain scenery, a large population, beach towns that draw millions of tourists, a major military presence, and a central role in U.S. history, Virginia is a unique and fascinating state, and the tenth place I'll cover in the U.S. Explained, a 56-part series on every state, territory, and federal district in the country, by order of admission. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. This is the U.S. Explained. Episode 10, Virginia. Before I begin, I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded. I didn't die and I wasn't kidnapped as some comments have speculated. The fact is, I've just been busy with college. Having a real in-person year means I have a much more tightly packed schedule. These videos can take weeks to crank out even if I have nothing going on, so finding a time to write and produce them is especially difficult when I have a lot of other work to do. I don't have a huge team doing this, so sometimes it might be a while between uploads. If you enjoy the series, please make sure to join my Discord server and help support the channel by joining my Patreon or buying some merchandise from the TII store. Now, back to Virginia. According to the Keppen climate classification, most of Virginia sits in the humid subtropical climate zone, with hot, humid summers and more mild winters, though much of the Appalachians, sitting at higher elevation, are located in colder climate zones and get much snowier winters. Virginia is nicknamed Old Dominion, one of just a few state nicknames that doesn't include the word state. It refers to Virginia's time as a British colony, either simply the fact that it was one of the British Empire's first colonial possessions, or, as it is often told, the name came about following the English Civil War, in recognition of Virginia's loyalty to the monarchy over the forces of Oliver Cromwell. It's also known as the Mother of Presidents, as eight US presidents were born in Virginia, more than in any other state. Presidential estates such as Washington's Mount Vernon, Jefferson's Monticello, and Madison's Montpelier sit throughout the state, and the city of Charlottesville is home to the University of Virginia, founded by Jefferson. It takes its name from British Queen Elizabeth I, who never married and was known as the Virgin Queen. Elizabeth reigned during a time when Britain had its eyes on North America. France and Spain had already begun colonizing the continent, and the British referred to parts of what is now the United States that were outside of colonial control land they wanted for themselves as Virginia. Though no successful British colonies were established in North America during Elizabeth's reign, the name Virginia still stuck following her death as a term for the land there that Britain wished to colonize. And two British companies formed with the goal of establishing colonies across the North American Atlantic coast both included the word Virginia in their name, the Virginia companies of London and Plymouth, respectively. They founded two colonies in the land they called Virginia. Popham in what is today Maine, and Jamestown alongside the James River. The Popham colony, however, failed and only Jamestown remained. Both of Britain's next two colonies, Kickatan and Henricus, each sat on the James River as well. With all of Britain's colonies in Virginia sitting relatively close to one another, the term soon came to refer not to the whole eastern seaboard of what would eventually become the United States, but just the area around those settlements themselves, which became known as the Virginia Colony. Virginia's flag is one of many state flags that depicts the state seal on a blue background. Because of this, it can be difficult to distinguish it from other state flags, especially at a distance. The image shown on the seal itself, though, is pretty unique. It shows a woman, representing virtue, standing with a spear over the top of the body of a fallen king. 
the words sic semper tyrannis, Latin for thus always to tyrants, underneath. Another interesting fact is that along with Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Kentucky, Virginia is one of four states that is officially called a commonwealth, a traditional term emphasizing the state as a community with a common good. This is different from the organization of former British colonies, and in practice, a commonwealth and a state are the exact same thing. The only difference is the name. Commonwealths are by all means considered states, but the term is something people who live in commonwealths are pretty proud of. Virginia has a land area of 39,000 square miles, or 102,000 square kilometers. Smaller than Ohio, but larger than Kentucky. This makes it the 36th largest state in the country in terms of area. That's definitely on the smaller side as states go, but sitting on the east coast, most of the states around it are similar in size, so it doesn't seem too small compared to its neighbors. When it comes to population though, Virginia is one of the largest states in the country, home to 8.38 million people, being the 12th most populous state in the US, with less people than New Jersey, but more than Washington state. This gives it a population density of 212 people per square mile, or 81 per square kilometer, a similar population density to the Dominican Republic, Seychelles, or North Korea. Virginia is located along the Atlantic Ocean in the southeastern part of the United States, a region commonly referred to as the South. It's also often considered part of the Mid-Atlantic, alongside states like Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York. This is likely due in part to the influence of the suburbs of neighboring Washington, D.C. have in the northern part of the state, with people moving to northern Virginia from around the country and the world to work in the U.S. capital, which gives the area around it a much more northern feel, though the state is overall very much a part of the South. Virginia borders five other states and the District of Columbia, and also has a coast on the Atlantic Ocean. It shares much of its southern border with North Carolina, a mostly straight line that extends 322 miles or 519 kilometers east to west from a beach just south of the Hampton Roads area to a spot in the Appalachians or Appalachians, the pronunciation really depends on where you live, where the border with North Carolina changes to a border with Tennessee. With the exception of a small notch belonging to Tennessee, the border continues west in a mostly straight path for about 110 miles or 178 kilometers. On this path, it cuts directly through the town of Bristol. Bristol isn't like some cities where a state line separates it from some suburbs in a different state. No, the border cuts right through the center of the town on State Street, its main road, dividing its business district right in two. Flags line the length of State Street, indicating what state you're in at a given time. It seems in every way like a single town, and by most respects it is, but it has two governments, two mayors, and sits in two different states. It's a similar situation to Texarkana, a city split right down the middle between Texas and Arkansas. The Virginia-Tennessee border ends, meeting the border with Kentucky, right at a spot in the mountains known as the Cumberland Gap, a pass in the Appalachians through which hundreds of thousands of settlers crossed, heading to places like Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio. On the other side of the gap, the Kentucky town of Middlesboro sits in what appears to be a small circular valley, but is actually a crater left by a meteorite. Interestingly enough, this westernmost point of Virginia is actually further west than the entire state of West Virginia. The Virginia-Kentucky border cuts northeast, sometimes following ridge tops, at other times a diagonal line, until it reaches a mountain stream known as Tug Fork, where the border with Kentucky ends and it meets the border with West Virginia. It follows Tug Fork upstream for just a few miles before it continues, weaving along ridge tops and slicing across valleys, generally heading southeast before turning to the northeast, weaving through vast stretches of the forests, hills, and peaks of the Appalachians. The Virginia-West Virginia border continues to just outside the historic West Virginia town of Harper's Ferry, where it meets the Potomac River, which forms the border between it and Maryland. The river flows from the mountains southeast, then turns to the southwest for a bit before going southeast once again, widening as it goes, and then emptying into the Chesapeake Bay. Across the river from the spot where it first turns, a small notch is carved out of the Maryland side. It is, of course, the District of Columbia, home to Washington, the capital city of the United States. I'll have my own video on DC, but just as I did with my Maryland video, you'll also get to hear a lot about the district in this video, as its influence on Virginia, especially Northern Virginia, is just far too significant to leave out. Other than a few inlets and coves, Virginia owns very little of the Potomac, and the Maryland border goes right up to the shore, meaning that if you live on the river in Virginia and you wade out into the water at all, you will be in Maryland. During times when gambling was legal in Maryland, some Virginia towns like Colonial Beach 
would even build casinos out onto the water where Maryland law applied. The Potomac empties into the Chesapeake Bay, and all of the bay south of the river's mouth belongs to Virginia, with its border with Maryland extending across the water and continuing onto the Delmarva Peninsula, giving Virginia a small eastern shore on the peninsula's southern tip. Despite being home to well over 8 million residents, much of Virginia is quite rural. Over half of the state's population lives within its three largest urban areas, the rest scattered between a number of smaller cities and towns. The Appalachians cut northeast to southwest, forming Virginia's western edge, so most of the state's rivers flow southeast from the mountains across its rolling hills and flat coastal plains to the Atlantic or to the Chesapeake Bay. As they approach the country's largest bay, the rivers that flow into it widen and essentially become arms of the tidal estuary. At its widest point, the Potomac is 11 miles across. For comparison, the Mississippi at its widest is only one mile. Four rivers in particular, the Potomac, Rappahannock, York, and James Rivers, grow quite wide, forming three peninsulas that sit between them. The northern neck between the Potomac and Rappahannock, the middle peninsula between the Rappahannock and York, and the Virginia Peninsula between the York and James Rivers. These four rivers have played a major role in American history, and today, most of the state's population lives alongside them. There's also the Delmarva Peninsula, which sits across the Chesapeake Bay, named as it's divided between Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. This small section of the state located on it is known as Virginia's Eastern Shore. Though only home to one half of 1% of the state's residents, the Eastern Shore is still very interesting. If you watched my Maryland video, you might remember me talking about the Assateague or Chincoteague ponies, wild swimming horses that live on a barrier island split between Maryland and Virginia and participate in an annual swim called the Pony Penning. Halfway between the eastern and western shores of the Chesapeake sits Tangier Island. Isolated and only reachable by a boat or plane, the island's been inhabited by crab and oyster catchers for the last 250 years, many of whom speak with a very unique accent which can be difficult for people outside of the area to understand sometimes described as sounding like an accent from Cornwall or rural parts of England, where the ancestors of many of the island's residents arrived from. The town of Tangier's flag even has the Cornish flag depicted on it, and I definitely encourage you to look up a video of the island's very unique accent. The island is swampy and very low-lying, with its highest point standing at only 6 feet. Unfortunately, this means rising sea levels present a massive threat to the island, and much of it is expected to sink within the next few decades. Because there isn't very much usable space and it is so low-lying, the island's cemeteries are very crowded and often bury people in partially above-ground tombs, sort of like those in New Orleans. Because there are no bridges to it, the island has very few cars, and people often use bikes or golf carts to get around. Moving back to the mainland, Washington, D.C., of course, sits across the Potomac from northern Virginia, an area nicknamed Nova. The city's suburbs sprawl across counties like Prince William County, Virginia's second most populous county, Fairfax County, its most populous, and Loudoun County, the wealthiest county in the entire United States by median household income. An interesting side note is that Virginia's county system is very unique. Across most of the United States, states are broken up into different counties, and cities sit within them. Chicago, for example, is part of the larger Cook County, Illinois. Houston sits within Harris County, Texas, and so on. However, there are 41 cities across the country that are not part of any county whatsoever known as independent cities. It's almost like how Washington, D.C. isn't a part of any state, just on the county level. You may know, for example, that the cities of Baltimore and St. Louis are not themselves parts of Baltimore County and St. Louis County, respectively, both of which are mostly suburban, with the cities carved out. Out of these 41 different independent cities within the United States, 38 of them are located in Virginia. Nearly every major city in the state is an independent city, but a number of small towns share the designation as well. They range from major urban centers like Norfolk, Richmond, Virginia Beach, and Alexandria, to places like Norton, a small mountain town home to less than 4,000 residents. Another interesting anomaly with Virginia's counties is the fact that an urban county home to well over 200,000 residents doesn't have a single incorporated city or town in it. You'd probably think that Arlington, arguably the most prominent and influential suburb of Washington, D.C., home to the Pentagon, Reagan National Airport, and of course the Arlington National Cemetery, would be a city. But in fact, it is not a city at all. It's a county and is governed by a county government, and despite having such a large population, no official cities are located within it. Arlington, Alexandria, and many other suburbs give Northern Virginia a large, fast-growing population. 2.5 million people live in Virginia's D.C. suburbs alone, 
That's close to 30% of the entire state's population, many of whom move there and commute to work from out of state. Were the section of DC's suburbs located in Virginia its own distinct urban area, it would rank all the way up at number 16 in terms of population in the country, and is home to more people than those that live in the urban areas of cities like St. Louis, Tampa, Denver, and Baltimore. Not only does it make these suburbs on their own far and away the most populous urban area in Virginia, despite their urban core not even sitting within the state, but it makes the suburbs of Northern Virginia the most populous part of the DC metro area altogether, surpassing the population of nearly 2 million in the Maryland suburbs and the nearly 700,000 people who live in the District of Columbia itself. DC is also the southern tip of the Northeast Megalopolis, the region where the Appalachians give way to a flat coastal plain, and the rivers that begin in the mountains create numerous bays, inlets, and harbors in the Atlantic, has the ideal conditions for major cities to develop, and has resulted in a near continuous swath of urban areas going all the way up to Boston. Sometimes the megalopolis is considered to extend as far south as Richmond, but much of the land between Washington and Richmond is quite rural, so it's debatable whether it really applies. Although there's much more to Virginia than just the DC suburbs, the nation's capital plays a considerable role in the state historically and in the modern day, and just as in the Maryland video, you'll get to learn a lot about Washington DC in this video. This series will also have its own video devoted to DC a few episodes from now, so you'll also hear more about it then. To the southeast of DC, about halfway between it and Richmond, on the Rappahannock River, sits Fredericksburg, an urban area of around 141,000 people that is the fifth largest in the state. George Washington's family is from the general area, and he was born alongside the Potomac not too far away. In fact, four other presidents, James Madison, James Monroe, Zachary Taylor, and William Henry Harrison, were all born not too far from Fredericksburg. The historic city has been around since the colonial era, and due to its location sitting right between the capitals of the Union and the Confederacy, it was a major battleground during the Civil War. DC and Fredericksburg each sit on the fall lines of their respective rivers, the furthest navigable spot inland from the ocean, where the rolling hills meet the flat coastal plain, and small waterfalls create great conditions for the formation of mills and industry. The same phenomenon is in part responsible for the growth of Virginia's capital and third largest urban area. Richmond, which sits south of Fredericksburg on the fall line of the James River. I'll talk more about Richmond later on in the video, a city home to 953,000 residents, but despite not being Virginia's largest city, it is in many ways the state's heart and cultural capital. Just to Richmond's south sits another smaller city, Petersburg, a historic city and transportation hub that has in recent years suffered economic decline. It sits on the Appomattox River, just upstream of its confluence with the James River. As the James flows towards the Chesapeake Bay, it helps form the Virginia Peninsula, the southernmost of the three peninsulas I discussed earlier. Sometimes just referred to as the Peninsula, it is itself a major center of population. About halfway down the peninsula sits Williamsburg, the anchor of Virginia's ninth largest urban area and home to about 75,000 residents. It, along with nearby Jamestown, Britain's first successful colonial settlement in what is now the United States, and Yorktown, where the Revolutionary War came to an end, are collectively referred to as the Historic Triangle. The city's home to the amusement park Bush Gardens, William and Mary, the second oldest college in the US, and Colonial Williamsburg, a restoration of the city's colonial downtown funded by the Rockefellers back in the 1920s. It's a massive living history museum filled with reenactors and restored as well as rebuilt buildings. Williamsburg was Virginia's capital during the colonial era, and you can still visit places like the old Capitol building and the Governor's Palace. Further to the southeast, the end of the peninsula becomes heavily populated, home to the cities of Hampton and Newport News. The urban area continues across the Hampton Roads, the waterway that is often collectively referred to as, where the James River meets the Chesapeake Bay, stretching on to the bay's mouth in the Atlantic. Cities across the water from the peninsula, like Chesapeake, Portsmouth, Virginia Beach, and Norfolk, the area's urban core, give the Hampton Roads a collective population of 1.4 million people making it the 34th largest urban area in the country, the second largest in Virginia, and the largest that's centered within the state. Despite a large population, there's an area right beside the metropolis that's practically uninhabited. The Great Dismal Swamp is divided between Virginia and North Carolina, though most of it sits within Virginia. It's a massive forested wetland that serves as a wildlife refuge. It can be difficult to navigate. In recent years, some research groups have gotten lost traveling within it, and many colonists thought it to be haunted. For many generations, enslaved people fleeing the plantations of the South sought refuge deep in the swamp, building homes and farms on small islands of raised land. Potentially up to 50,000 people lived in the swamp, all the way up to the end of the Civil War and the abolition of slavery. 
There's a lot you can read about the communities of people fleeing slavery and persecution who found sanctuary in the swamp, a little known but important piece of American history. The swamp and the forest covered Appalachians contribute to a high rate of forest cover in the state, with nearly 63% of Virginia sitting under tree cover, the ninth highest rate of any state in the US. Much of the coastal plain and higher sitting Piedmont are a mix of forests and small farms. As states go, Virginia is no longer a major agricultural producer, but it does grow more tobacco than all but two other states. The southern section of the state part of a belt of tobacco production that goes from Kentucky to northern Florida, mostly rural save for the occasional larger town like Danville. Only at the foot of the Appalachians does Virginia become more populous, home to a string of small cities stretching down the state like Blacksburg, Roanoke, and Lynchburg in the south, and Charlottesville, Staunton, Harrisonburg, and Winchester further in the north. The last three towns I listed all sit within the Shenandoah Valley, a valley cutting through the Appalachians of Virginia and West Virginia and drained by the Shenandoah River, which flows into the Potomac at Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. While much of coastal Virginia, especially the area around the James River, was settled by English colonists, the Shenandoah Valley and nearby parts of the Appalachians were primarily settled by Irish, German, and Scotch-Irish settlers who traveled south from Pennsylvania. The valley was considered the country's frontier during the early years of the United States when few crossed into the Appalachians. Today, it's one of the state's most farmland-covered areas, including a number of vineyards, which along with plentiful orchards and numerous recreational opportunities, draw lots of visitors. The Appalachians, including the famed range cutting through Virginia known as the Blue Ridge Mountains, are incredibly scenic. Virginia is only the second state I've covered in this series that's home to a national park. Named Shenandoah, it occupies a section of the Blue Ridge Mountains near Harrisonburg and is one of just a few national parks located in states in the eastern seaboard. The Blue Ridge Parkway, in some areas known as Skyline Drive, is a road cutting through the Appalachians in Virginia and North Carolina. Considered one of the most scenic drives in the country and sitting not far from several major east coast cities, the Blue Ridge Parkway has held the record for being the most visited place operated by the National Park Service for all but four of the last 75 years. In 2020 alone, 14.1 million people visited the Blue Ridge Parkway, nearly 6% of all visitors to a National Park Service location that year. In other parts of the Appalachians, especially further to the south near the coal mining regions of West Virginia and Kentucky, the area is more rural and faces economic challenges as the mining industry struggles. What is now Virginia was originally home to many indigenous peoples, tribes such as the Manahoac, Monacan, Sapony, Saura, Tutelo, Lumbi, Uchi, Cherokee, and Monotan lived throughout the Appalachians and Piedmont, and dozens of other indigenous peoples inhabited land along the coast and the rivers flowing to the Chesapeake Bay. From the James River to the Potomac lived dozens of Algonquian tribes that united under a leader named Wahoon Sinakik, or Powhatan. Known as the Powhatan Confederacy, it was a powerful force in the region in the years leading up to the arrival of British settlers. Though Britain had attempted to found a North American colony two decades earlier on Roanoke Island in what is now North Carolina, it had famously disappeared, and no British colonies had been established in North America since. In 1609, however, three ships sailing from London landed on a swampy area along what they called the James River, after British King James I, and founded a settlement they named Jamestown. In the first few years, most of Jamestown's inhabitants died of starvation as well as in clashes with the Powhatan Confederacy. English settlers kidnapped Powhatan's daughter, Pocahontas, who was then wed to a wealthy settler named John Rolfe and has since become heavily mythologized. Rolfe brought to Jamestown with him tobacco seeds from Trinidad, which he began farming, exporting the tobacco back to Europe, where it became extremely popular. The tobacco industry soon came to dominate Jamestown and more colonists headed west hoping to profit off of it. As tobacco plantations sprang up around the settlement, a horrible practice began with them. In 1619, a ship arrived in what is now Hampton, Virginia, where the James River meets the Chesapeake Bay. Its passengers were from the African kingdoms of Congo and Angola, where they'd been kidnapped by Portuguese troops and forced west, headed for the Spanish settlement of Veracruz in what is now Mexico. Along the way, pirates boarded the ship, taking many of its captives with them to Virginia, where they were sold into slavery to the Jamestown colonists beginning of an awful system in the 13 colonies that went on to shape American history for centuries to come. Colonists also brought with them to Jamestown deadly diseases such as smallpox, which had spread through the Eastern Hemisphere for thousands of years but had not reached the Americas until the beginning of the European colonialism. 
While colonists had built up some immunity due to the presence of the diseases in Europe, the indigenous people of the Americas had not, and were decimated by their arrival. 100 years after the founding of Jamestown, 75% of Virginia's native people had been killed. Founded before any other successful British settlement, home to excellent ports on the Chesapeake Bay, and home to flat land, lots of fresh water, and relatively warm weather, the area around Jamestown quickly became a major center of agriculture and population. Tobacco, farmed by enslaved people on large plantations, created a wealthy class of Virginia planters who came to dominate colonial society. In 1624, King James transferred control of Jamestown and surrounding lands from the London Company to the Crown, naming it the Colony of Virginia. From the outset, it was the population center of the 13 colonies, except for a brief period when it was surpassed by Massachusetts, from its founding as a colony to the Revolutionary War, it was the most populous British colony in what was now the United States. By 1770, it was home to 447,000 residents. The next most populous colony, Pennsylvania, had just over half that many. By the end of the century, the capital of Virginia was moved from Jamestown to Williamsburg, just five miles away, leading the city to fade from relevance and lose its population. 20 years prior, the city had been burned to the ground during Bacon's Rebellion, in which a man named Nathaniel Bacon led a revolt against Governor William Berkeley, fueled by anger around the stark class distinctions between the rich plantation owners and the poor laborers, indentured servants, and enslaved people in the colony. It was sparked by the desire of Bacon and many other poor Virginians living on the edge of the colony to push their borders westward by attacking neighboring indigenous peoples, many of whom were allies of the colonial government. After the governor would not help him, Bacon built up a force of armed working class supporters and began attacking neighboring native tribes and government forces, eventually burning Jamestown to the ground. The rebellion left Virginia's planter elite scared, and following the victory of the colonial government, it began a push to further divide the laboring class who'd supported Bacon by race. After the government's victory, most white indentured servants were released from servitude, while plantation owners began using only black people as forced laborers, creating an explicit tie between skin color and enslavement throughout Britain's colonies that would further cement the foundation for centuries of racism in the United States. As the colony's population grew, settlers from Virginia began pushing west into the Appalachians and the Ohio Valley on the other side. There, they came into conflict with the French, who claimed ownership of the region. The forks of the Ohio, the strategic location where the river is formed by the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers, and where Pittsburgh is located today, was a major point of contention. Forces led by a 21-year-old surveyor and lieutenant colonel from a wealthy family of Virginia planters named George Washington led an assault on the forks, sparking an international conflict between France and Britain known as the Seven Years' War, the North American conflict often referred to as the French and Indian War. Britain won, pushing colonial control west past the Appalachians, but it drove them deep into debt. To pay off the debt, Britain began leaving numerous new taxes on the colonies, helping to spark the American Revolution. As the main population and economic center of the colonies, Virginia played an essential role in the revolution, home to influential figures such as Patrick Henry and George Mason. Many early U.S. presidents, such as George Washington, gained their first political experience in the House of Burgesses, Virginia's colonial legislature. Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration of Independence, and James Madison, the author of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, were both Virginians who went on to play a major part in the American Revolution and serve as U.S. president. Both also owned large plantations farmed by hundreds of enslaved people, a stark and awful contradiction to the rights put forward in the founding documents they contributed to. The Revolutionary War came to an end in Virginia with the Siege of Yorktown, where British General Charles Cornwallis surrendered to Generals Washington and Rochambeau. On June 25, 1788, Virginia ratified the Constitution, becoming the 10th state to join the U.S. Just two years later, seeking a location for a national capital, the Founding Fathers selected a site on the Potomac River not far from where many of them lived, encompassing the cities of Georgetown, Maryland, and Alexandria, Virginia, and carving a square-shaped district out of the two states. In 1846, however, the portion ceded from Virginia was returned, leaving just the section that belonged to Maryland. Two years after that, a large western swath of the state, located on the other side of the Appalachians, which was primarily settled by Virginians crossing through the Cumberland Gap, split off to form the new state of Kentucky. Virginia still remained heavily dependent on slavery, and as tensions rose between those who wanted the horrible institution preserved and those seeking its abolition, Virginia was a major area of contention. 
Southampton County in the southern part of the state was home to Nat Turner, who led a multi-day rebellion of enslaved people against their oppressors, an outbreak of bloodshed that was a glimpse of the conflict to come. In the northern part of the state, John Brown led a failed raid on a weapons arsenal in the town of Harper's Ferry, hoping to initiate a revolt that would bring an end to slavery. While other southern states began seceding after the election of Abraham Lincoln, Virginia initially remained with the Union. However, when the war did eventually break out in April of 1861 with the attack on Fort Sumter, Virginia seceded, a move that angered many in the western part of the state, leading 50 counties in the Appalachians to secede from Virginia and the Confederacy and rejoin the Union as the new state of West Virginia. Soon after Virginia seceded, the capital of the Confederacy was moved from Montgomery, Alabama to Virginia's capital of Richmond, where it stayed until the city's fall, when it was moved for just eight days to Danville, Virginia. Because both the Union and Confederate capitals were so close to one another, Virginia was a major war zone, home to many of the Civil War's bloodiest battles, such as the battles of Chancellorsville, the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, and Bull Run or Manassas, just to name a few. Confederate General Robert E. Lee was from the state and commanded the Army of Northern Virginia during much of the war. The Civil War came to an end in Virginia with Lee's surrender to Ulysses S. Grant near the town of Appomattox. During the war, the Union seized control of Lee's estate, known as Arlington, which sat just across the Potomac from DC. After the war as a form of punishment towards Lee and a solution to overcrowding in graveyards, the grounds were turned into Arlington National Cemetery. Today, around 400,000 American veterans are buried in Arlington, as well as historical figures such as William Howard Taft, the Kennedys, Thurgood Marshall, Joe Lewis, and Medgar Evers, a southern state where black people were subject to segregation and racist Jim Crow laws, Virginia played an important role in the civil rights movement. Throughout the state following the end of Reconstruction, black Virginians were forced to use segregated public services, denied the right to vote, and many were trapped in low-paying jobs as sharecroppers on former tobacco plantations. In 1967, the Supreme Court case Loving v. Virginia took down the state's ban on interracial marriage, and in doing so, overturned such bans on it across the country. Another case, Davis v. County School Board of Prince Edward County, was combined with four other cases to make the famed case Brown v. Board of Education, in which the Supreme Court struck down public school segregation and overturned separate but equal, the legal precedent southern states have been using to justify segregation. During World War II, the state, helped by its proximity to DC, became a major military area, with the Hampton Roads area in the south developing into an important naval center, and the Department of Defense and Intelligence Agencies building headquarters and training centers in the DC suburbs. As the DC suburbs in Northern Virginia grew, the expansion of government jobs in the region helped turn it into one of the wealthiest parts of the country, a fast-growing region home to a large population. In fact, today, 17% of working Virginians work in government. On September 11, 2001, Virginia was one of three locations where the 9-11 attacks took place, when a hijacked plane crashed into the Pentagon, the Department of Defense headquarters in Arlington, killing 184 people. Racial issues have continued to be a major part of modern Virginia's history. In 2017, the city of Charlottesville became the location of a violent white supremacist rally, in which white supremacists clashed with counter-protesters, and one counter-protester was murdered. Monument Avenue in Richmond, a boulevard lined with several Confederate statues, was a major site of protests in the summer of 2020, which saw protesters topple one statue before several others were ordered removed. The largest urban area in the state are the suburbs of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia, home to 2.5 million people, or almost 30% of the state's entire population. Part of the ninth largest urban area in the country, the Northern Virginia suburbs alone would still be the country's 17th largest urban area without D.C. or Maryland. Centered around Washington, D.C., the most urbanized parts of Northern Virginia are Alexandria and Arlington, which sit just across the Potomac from the district. Arlington, a county home to no incorporated areas but over 200,000 people, is home to a number of built-up neighborhoods, the urbanization of which in many cases follow the routes of DC metro lines. Because Washington DC has a height limit keeping most buildings at high-rise level, many of the metro area skyscrapers are located in Arlington. Roslyn, right across the Potomac from Georgetown, has the most prominent skyline in the DC area and offers some of the best views of the city, especially because it can be a very long way to get into the Washington Monument. It's also home to the first ever Marriott Hotel. Other neighborhoods like Ballston, Clarendon, and Pentagon City are home to a number of high-rises and skyscrapers. Crystal City, located right next to Arlington's Reagan National Airport, one of the main airports serving the DC area, 
was the site selected for Amazon's second headquarters, HQ2. Arlington's home to the Pentagon, the massive headquarters of the Department of Defense, and though it is very closed off to the public, there is a 9-11 memorial outside the spot where Flight 77 struck that is definitely worth a visit. It's probably most famous for Arlington National Cemetery, the vast resting place of 400,000 veterans. The beautiful cemetery, which takes up much of the county, is dotted with several major memorials. It's home to three tall spires of the Air Force Memorial and the Marines Memorial, which depicts the famous flag-raising photo from the Battle of Iwo Jima. John F. Kennedy's grave is honored by an eternal flame, and Jackie, Bobby, and Ted Kennedy, along with two of JFK's children who died young, are buried alongside him. The Arlington House, located on the grounds, was the mansion of the Custis family, descendants of George Washington's stepson, and later the Lees, who married into the family before the property was confiscated during the Civil War. Probably the most striking memorial is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, dedicated to soldiers whose remains could not be identified. It's definitely worth a visit, especially if you have a chance to observe the changing of the guard ceremony. Alexandria is an older city home to 157,000 people, and existed before the creation of DC. It's home to a historic old town with brick sidewalks and colonial buildings. Just like DC and Maryland, it's home to its own Washington Monument, the George Washington Masonic National Memorial. Just to the south sits Washington's estate, Mount Vernon. Further out into the suburbs are a number of major military and intelligence installations, such as Fort Belvoir, Langley, home to the headquarters of the CIA, and Quantico, a town with a marine base home to the FBI Training Academy. Along with Reagan and Arlington, Northern Virginia is also home to Dulles International Airport, a major airport serving the DC area. Other suburbs like Tyson's, Bailey's Crossroads, and Reston are built up areas with their own high-rises and skylines. High-paying jobs in government and military, as well as in major companies like Amazon, help make Nova one of the wealthiest parts of the country. In fact, out of the six wealthiest counties in the US by median household income, three are in Northern Virginia. Loudoun, Fairfax, and Arlington are the first, third, and sixth wealthiest respectively, and Arlington ranks as the wealthiest by median family income. Besides Amazon, the DC suburbs are home to many major companies and organizations, such as PBS, Hilton, Politico, The Motley Fool, E-Trade, Booz Allen Hamilton, Freddie Mac, Capital One, Navy Federal Credit Union, Mars, and Gannett, which owns USA Today and thousands of local newspapers. Numerous international companies have US headquarters in Northern Virginia too, such as Mitsubishi, Nestle, Rolls-Royce, and Volkswagen. The state's second largest urban area is often referred to as Hampton Roads, a collection of cities sitting where the James River meets the Chesapeake Bay, which then meets the Atlantic. It's home to 1.4 million people, making it the country's 34th largest urban area, about the same size as Indianapolis or Milwaukee. It's centered around the city of Norfolk, which sits on the Elizabeth River, a tidal arm of the Chesapeake Bay that provides it with an excellent port, and has the region's largest and most developed downtown. In fact, the Hampton Roads area is home to the Port of Virginia, the sixth busiest port in the US, and it serves as a major center of shipping and trade. It's also a very important military center, home to the largest naval base in the world, Naval Station Norfolk, home to the US Fleet Forces Command, formerly known as the Atlantic Fleet. Lambert's Point is a massive rail yard owned by Norfolk Southern, used for exporting coal between ships and trains. The city of Newport News is home to Newport News Shipbuilding, the only place that makes US aircraft carriers. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel connects the Hampton Roads to the Eastern Shore and is the fourth longest bridge in the country. It is at times a bridge and at times a tunnel made so the naval fleets in Norfolk would not be trapped if the bridge were attacked and collapsed. Other cities in the region include Hampton, Suffolk, which sits across the Great Dismal Swamp, Portsmouth, Chesapeake, the headquarters of Dollar Tree, and Virginia Beach. The most populous city in the metro area in the state overall, home to 450,000 residents, Virginia Beach is a major tourist destination, bringing in 20 million visitors a year, and is home to numerous high-rises and skyscrapers on the beachfront, as well as the famous King Neptune statue. A former Virginia Beach landfill has since been turned into a hill called Mount Trashmore, which has become a popular park. The final city I'll discuss is Virginia's capital, Richmond. Home to 953,000 people, it's the 45th most populous urban area in the country and the third in the state. Virginia's capital city, it's home to a unique state house designed by Thomas Jefferson. The Virginia General Assembly, which meets there, has met for over 400 years, making the oldest legislature on the continent. Besides being Virginia's center of government, it also houses a Federal Reserve Bank as well as a Court of Appeals. Sitting on the James River, the city is the historic and cultural center of the state, and has served as its capital for hundreds of years. 
It's known for beautiful architecture, old brick buildings, a canal system branching off of the James River, and delicious food. While the two Virginia urban areas larger than it are both collections of distinct cities and suburbs, Richmond is the clear center of its metro, and contributes an outsized amount to the culture of the state. Other notable smaller cities in Virginia include Charlottesville, home to the University of Virginia, Blacksburg, home to Virginia Tech, as well as Roanoke and Lynchburg, smaller cities nestled at the foot of the Appalachians. As states go, Virginia is quite diverse. 19% of the state's residents are black, the ninth highest proportion in the country, and 11% are Latino. In addition, nearly 9% of Virginians are Asian American, the seventh highest percentage in the country, and the state is home to a large community of Filipino, Vietnamese, and Korean Americans. Though it is not particularly religiously diverse, being overwhelmingly Christian, the state is home to the second largest mosque in the US, located in the northern Virginia city of Sterling. Not one major league sports team is based in Virginia, making the most populous state to not have a major league pro sports team. The largest newspaper in the country, USA Today, is based out of the northern Virginia suburb of McLean. Politically, Virginia leans slightly towards the Democratic Party. The Cook Partisan Voting Index rates it D plus 2, which means that in a given year, the Democratic Party performs about 2% better in Virginia than in the country on average. Though a traditionally conservative southern state, Virginia's political competitiveness is mostly due to the influence of the fast-growing northern Virginia suburbs, which have given it a growing liberal lean. Though the state has voted for the Democratic nominee in the last four presidential elections and often by growing margins, it is still quite competitive, as was visible with the recent election of Glenn Youngkin, a Republican, as governor in the closely watched 2021 gubernatorial election. More US presidents were born in Virginia than any other state, a total of eight. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, William Henry Harrison, Zachary Taylor, John Tyler, and Woodrow Wilson all called Virginia home, though some had moved elsewhere by the time they ran for office. That is it for Virginia. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad-free content, and shoutouts in my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store, where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official That Is Interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, embroidered backpacks made by Champion, laptop stickers, and sleeves, and so on. One of the products that I'm most excited about are these limited edition frame state prints that commemorate each video in the US Explained. These are available as soon as the corresponding US Explained video is uploaded, but only 10 of each will be released, so make sure to buy one before they go out of stock. Right now, you'll be able to buy a Virginia state print, so please click the link in the description and go pay a visit to the TII store. Also, please subscribe to my brother's channel, Quinn the Cameraman. He made the great intro at the beginning of this video that I'll use in all the US Explained videos, and he did the editing, so go show him some support. I tried to be pretty thorough with this video, but I know there were definitely things I missed as there was a lot to talk about. I want to give a big thank you to everyone from Virginia who helped give me information for this video, leaving detailed and informative comments on YouTube as well as Discord. I truly would not have been able to make this video without all your help. My next video in this series will be on New York, and I haven't spent very much time there, so I'll need all the help I can get. If you're from New York, please respond to my community post or my comment here, or leave something in the Discord server to let me know what you'd like to see included about your home state. I really appreciate the well over 400 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information about upcoming states in this series. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.